Hey everybody, I am Josh Peck. I certainly hope that you were able to catch the last video that we did on this channel, and I hope that you were able to catch the whole thing at dailyrenegade.com. You can get a free trial right now. I mean, if you can't afford a membership, we do make it available for a free trial, and I want you to have access to the information, um, but with YouTube deleting things, we can't just put it all out there for free like we used to be able to. Uh, but through that, I, I usually try to make these videos where you don't have to have, uh, if I ever do part one, part two, part three, I, I don't like doing it where I usually try to do it where you, you don't have to have the, the first video to understand the second one. This is not it. This is not one of those. You need the first video to understand this one. So if you're coming into this fresh and you didn't watch the previous video, um, go back and watch that. I would suggest just turning this off right now and going back and watching that. And, and watch Dot com because there's so much information there. This video isn't going to make a whole lot of sense without all of that context. Uh, so for those who were able to watch the whole thing, uh, this is the second video. And um, in this, I, I guess, series, but um, we're, we're talking about the return of Christ, how I have come to believe that Christ is actually going to return in the spring and not the fall. And in the last video, we talked about the 1290, 1260, 1335 days, uh, the time times, half a time, the Moedim cycle. We talked about the 42 months and we worked with all of that, uh, to show that the, um, from the time that the abomination of desolation is set up until it is removed is 1290 days. and But it's also three and a half Moedim cycles. And the only two festivals that that fits is the abomination of desolation for when, uh, or, or excuse me, the day of atonement for when the abomination of desolation is set up. And then the first fruits of barley when Jesus returns and, and takes it down. Um, and I went through all of that in the last video, so uh, you'll, you'll just have to take my word for it. But there, there's a lot of reason to believe that. But what that means is if, if, if the, the, roughly the middle of the tribulation is in the fall, it means the beginning and the end are in the, of the tribulation are in the spring, which means Jesus returns in the spring. Um, and there's a lot of good reason to, to, to believe that's true. That does go a little outside tradition, and I don't mean, you know, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to anybody. It still very well could be the fall. Lots of reasons to believe that. So this, I'm not being dogmatic about this or anything. But I think it's a possibility that we should at least discover uh, or, or consider. And so you, you really need the, the, the first video that I started this with. So hopefully you have watched that. Uh, and, um, if not, you can try and follow along. I, I, that, that's about as much review as I'm going to, uh, do. Uh, but I'm actually, so just picking up from the, the last thing that I talked about, I, I talked about how, you know, Jesus at first returns to make war with his enemies. He does so from atop a horse, and he apparently goes to a variety of places, such as Edom, Basra, mentioned in uh, Isaiah 63, um, and you know, Revelation says that he will rule them, meaning at this time he's not ruling just yet. Uh, but when he makes his way to the Mount of Olives and dismounts his horse, uh, and his feet stand on the ground, that seems to be the time that his official return as ruler begins. Uh, so we have some period of time between his return in the clouds to make war with his enemies and the time that he actually sets his feet on the Mount of Olives. There's, there's a period of time there. And we also looked at uh, how Israel is protected, how the whole Petra thing works. You know, Israel is nourished. We did all those day counts to figure it all out. Um, so here I want to start with putting the pieces together. And then I want to talk about why spring. Why would God uh, return in the spring and not the fall? He already fulfilled the spring feasts. So why would he come and return, the, re return just to fulfill them again? So I'm going to talk about that. Um, so putting all the pieces together from the last video, I would suggest that Jesus returns on his horse on Nisan 1, which is the spring day of remembrance. It's, it's the new year. Um, because this is exactly 1260 days from the day of atonement. Um, and so we know that the rule of the Antichrist ends on the 1290 days. So we have that 30 day. Now, um, from the 1260 day, at that point, Israel's provisions that God had set up before, uh, before time, uh, before the time they have arrived, that that's that's run out or is no longer needed. Um, 
I would suggest that it's, it's not that they ran out, it's just that they're no longer needed because their Savior is now here. Jesus is now here. Jesus has returned. Now he returns from the clouds on a horse, and he hasn't set his feet down yet as king, but um, Jesus will now make sure that they're taken care of for the remainder of their time. Um, now, how is he going to take care of Israel? By defeating Israel's enemies. That's why Israel has to still wait till the 1335 days, till Pentecost, uh, Israel still has to wait there, but they don't need those provisions anymore. Uh, they're, they're no longer needed. So the provisions that were already put in place, again, that's probably the protection of the mountains themselves. We looked at that earlier, uh, are no longer needed because Jesus is here to protect Israel now. Jesus makes war against uh, his enemies, and we actually find out that that is for um, 25 days, possibly. Might, might be a little longer. It, it depends if we're counting from uh, the new year until first fruits of barley, which is 25 days, or if we're counting till Pentecost, um, which is, what would that be, 40-something days? I, I, I'd have to go back and count, maybe 50, uh, somewhere around there. Um, it'd be a little less than 50, I think. But... Um, I, I'd have to I'd have to look at it, but um, but that's actually why I I want to do these videos because I caught something in my notes in the last video that might be correct or might be a mistake, and I made a note to go and look at that later. Uh, and again, like I said before, I, I'm compiling all these notes because I'm I'm writing a book. It's going to be published through Defender Prophecy, and um, I want to make sure that everything works out right here. And uh, I, I, I need all of this math to work out. So uh, talking it out and kind of thinking it through in a video uh, is another way that really, really helps me make sure that this is accurate because I don't want anything to go to print that's not right. So, um, yeah, and I also mentioned before it would be really helpful if I had somebody that I could send all of my notes to and then have them go through, redo the math, check up on my work and make sure that it's actually right. Um, so if any of you are like really, really good at math and you really like the festivals and you really like keeping things secret and not just sending them out to the internet, uh, that, that's actually the biggest reason I haven't gone out and tried to find somebody to, to do this for me because I, I just, I don't want any stranger, you know, um, having access to my stuff and just putting it out there for everybody before it's published. Uh, that could cause a lot of problems, but anyway... So th these videos kind of help me refine uh, something that I'm working on, you know, whether it's a book or a presentation or whatever. Uh, and I always put extra information at dailyrenegade.com because I figure nobody's going to pay to troll me. Uh, if you're if you're a paying member there, then you're likely there because you believe in the ministry and you want to support us and, and help us do what we do. And so we greatly appreciate that. And I always try to give you guys, um, you know, extra stuff. But Anyway, so I think that Jesus will make war against his enemies for uh, a length of time. Um, it, now it's 25 days from the spring, from the new year, uh, from the head of the year, Nissan 1, till first fruits of barley. So that might be the time frame, or it might be until Pentecost. But let's let's just say that, that it's that 25 day. Now remember, within that 25 day window, we have Passover and unleavened bread. Now that fits perfectly for Jesus' uh, judgment against his enemies because at that time, during his first advent, Jesus was being crucified and buried. So would it not make sense for Jesus to use that exact time for judgment against his enemies? Uh, you know, those who have pierced him and, and things like that. So I, it seems like that would be a very fitting time. Also, there's something uh, amazing to consider. During that 25-day period, we have no way of knowing what exact day and hour Jesus will return to Jerusalem? There's no way to know. Uh, we know that at some point he does, but we don't know for sure that he will return to Jerusalem exactly on the first fruits of barley. Um, we we only know that first fruits of barley looks like the day that his feet stand on the Mount of Olives, but we don't we don't know. Um, Jesus could have been in Jerusalem for days before that, for all we know. Uh, he might show up on Passover. He might show up in Jerusalem. Because remember, he does some things throughout the world, too. But he might show up. Uh, so he, he, he returns from heaven on the, the first day of the year, Nisan 1. He might 
do some things around the world for a little while and and because it, it talks about that he like slaughters people and uh, Edom and Basra and all these places so uh, but then he might then at Passover he might return to Jerusalem he might return to Jerusalem on first fruits of barley uh, or some other random day he might he might show up at, at, at any any time in between that time period uh, he has at least if not more he has at least an entire 25 day window to complete various things so this actually gives, I think this gives us new meaning to Jesus' words about not knowing the day or the hour. A lot of people attribute that to the rapture, but I don't, I don't think it's talking about the rapture. I think it is talking about his return. Uh, Matthew 24, 36 and 39b from the KJV says, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only, uh, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man be. Uh, now that's also probably an idiom having to do with uh, the Jewish wedding ceremony. Because um, if you've ever seen Before the Wrath, then you probably already know this. But in the Jewish wedding ceremony, the groom does not know when uh, he's going to go get his bride. Uh, because the, the father is the one that like wakes him up and says, hey, go get your bride now. And the, 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 the groom has no idea when that's going to be. So that could be meant to... When Jesus said that, it might not have been like literal, but it might have been just meant to convey that. But I would think his return for the bride would be the rapture, and I don't think that verse is talking about the rapture. It could be, it could be, but I I think that that when when you read further when he explains things, it really sounds like his second coming. It doesn't sound like the rapture. But again, that's that's up in the air. There's a thousand different ways to look at that. But um, if it does have to do with his return, we don't know the the day or the hour that he's going to return there to Jerusalem. So if Jesus is talking about his literal and physical return to Jerusalem, we do not, we cannot know the exact day and hour until it actually happens because we have a 25-day window of time to work with here. Between At least, it might even be longer, but um, at least between the head of the year when he returns from heaven uh, in the sky, you know, he descends from heaven to the earth. Uh, between that time and then 25 days later, uh, first fruits of barley, where it looks like that that's that's where he uh, annihilates the or, or destroys the abomination of desolation. Now, he might still be on his horse when he does that. He might not actually put his feet down on the Mount of Olives until... Um, so we have at least a 25-day window here. Could be longer. Um, so what day and hour that he actually makes that return to Jerusalem, only the Father can know until it actually happens. So I, I think that fits uh, with what Jesus is talking about. Because after Jesus says that, he talks about you know the judgment and all this stuff that happens at his return. And um, so we, we don't know exactly when all that's going to happen. Now, the return of Jesus could also be understood as a procession uh, because of uh, Revelation states that he returns to earth with his heavenly armies. That's Revelation 19, 14. And after that, all the other battles are won. Jesus finally returns to Jerusalem sometime within that 25-day period or, or maybe later if it's Pentecost. Defeats the Antichrist, removes the abomination of desolation from the temple. Um, then it it appears that on first fruits of barley, uh, because as we saw before, first fruits of barley was when he presented himself after all the cleansing that he did, uh, after the cleansing and the sin offering and all that. After the cleansing, that's when he presented himself in bodily form to his disciples, to his Jewish brothers, you know, to his disciples, and they were able to touch him and stuff. So it seems like that. First fruits of barley again will be the day that he dismounts his horse, presents himself in his resurrected body, puts his feet down on the Mount of Olives, and shows himself publicly for the first time as king. See, it seems like it. There, there might be some things that we're missing there, but it's around that time. Again, Pentecost can factor into this quite a bit too. Then finally, 50 days later, which that would be the end of the 1335-day count from uh, Tabernacles, which we looked at in the last video, three and a half Moedim cycles earlier, a new oath is proclaimed to the world because, again, Pentecost is also called the Feast of Oaths or Covenants. It's like a new covenant. The new oath is proclaimed to the world and the kingdom age officially begins. That's, what it, that's at least what it looks like. 
Now, there's a, another possibility that maybe the time between the destruction of the Antichrist and Jesus showing himself publicly as king on the Mountain of Olives is longer than originally thought. You know, it's possible that Jesus destroys the Antichrist on first fruits of barley, but does not go up to the Mount of Olives again until Pentecost 50 days later. Um, and that's what I was mentioning earlier. And what that view has in favor is that there are parallels between Pentecost and at Mount Sinai from the book of Exodus and Jesus at the, as the Mount of Olives. So uh, at the Mount of Olives, both have angels present, both have an earthquake, both have, you know, a mountain, both have uh, new instructions given to the followers of God. Um, and one moment. Okay. And uh, Jesus says in Matthew 24, 29 through 32, immediately, and this is from the KJV, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the, sun, the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That's verse 30, and then verse 31, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds one from one end of the heaven to the other um, between verse 30 and 31 we don't know how much time is in between there and and we can be fairly certain that those events uh, when those th th these events happen that they begin at the time Jesus comes from heaven back to the earth because that time is described as immediately after the tribulation of those days so we see that the Son of Man Jesus comes on the clouds uh, all, all, all with all of the um, or on the clouds, all, all the tribes of the earth are able to see him. Um, he, sorry, I got tripped up because my notes are scattered. So, sometimes I think real fast, and I, my when I first write my notes, I, I can't keep up with it. Jesus comes on the clouds, all the tribes of the earth are able to see him. Then he sends his angels with the sound of a trumpet to gather the elect. Now, uh, I want to talk about that trumpet because most prophecy experts place this event on the Feast of Trumpets because there's a trumpet. And, you know, for a long time, I believed that myself uh, until only recently. And, I, and I'll say, too, it's still possible. But I now believe that this is going to occur on one of the pilgrimage festivals in the spring. So remember, there are um, three festivals where the Jewish people are expected to travel to Jerusalem to celebrate. It's Passover, Pentecost and uh, tabernacles. So you have three. Two of those are in the spring. And these festivals are all initiated with a trumpet. We get that from Numbers 10, verses 1 through 10. So Jesus could return in the clouds on Nisan 1. Then on Passover, two weeks later, he could blow the trumpet for the angels to help the elect make their ultimate pilgrimage, because this is clearly a pilgrimage thing. They're all coming to Jerusalem. That's actually probably what the pilgrimage festivals um, point to. Uh, or maybe he um, destroys his enemies on Passover and unleavened bread, just as his enemies attempted to destroy him during his time, uh, during that same time period in 32 AD, but doesn't blow the trumpet until Pentecost. That might be the time. We, we don't really know how much time exists between verse 30 and 31 of Matthew 24. But given the timeline that we've looked at, Passover or Pentecost are the two best options for that event rather than tabernacles or trumpets. And it's probably Passover because, well, maybe not. It could be Pentecost. I, I'm still looking into that myself. Um, so we will, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, now let me see here. How much do we have? All right. Uh, we'll do a little more before we... Switch to members. So why spring and not fall? That's that's what a lot of people um, wonder. Now, th this one really bothered me for a while because I've been interested in Bible prophecy ever since I was a child. One of the first things I ever learned about the feasts was that Jesus fulfilled the spring feasts in his first advent and he would come to fulfill the fall feasts in his second advent. So why would he come and fulfill the spring feasts again? You know, that seems odd. It, it didn't seem to make sense, but all the numbers seem to fit with that. Um but then I remembered how Pentecost was fulfilled, and then everything fell into place. So this is really cool. Uh, it, it's amazing how one simple thing can open everything else up for us. Um, the way that Pentecost was fulfilled was a little unique compared to the way that Jesus fulfilled the other uh, feasts. So 
Jesus fulfilled Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits of barley in bodily form on earth, right? But Pentecost was fulfilled from heaven by the Father sending the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And we get that from John 14, 26, and then also Acts 2, 1 through 4. Jesus did not fulfill Pentecost in bodily form on earth. But we know at some point he will fulfill it that way, but it won't be until he makes his return to earth and initiates the kingdom age. So there's a big gap between first fruits of barley, when he, when he showed himself to the disciples, and the next time that he's bodily going to fulfill a feast, which would be, well, I mean, technically he's re-fulfilling some of the spring ones, but but the the way that he he fulfills the 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 in bodily form the next spring feast Pentecost to believers because again by this time all the enemies are done away with to um, believers will be Pentecost so there's there's like a, a gap there so he will fulfill it in bodily form at some day but it won't be until he makes his return to earth and initiates the kingdom so in that sense Pentecost gets two fulfillments. Now, actually, if we factor in all of the covenants of all ages, Pentecost is fulfilled quite a few times, like over and over again. Um, But even though Pentecost was fulfilled in a different way than the rest of the three, uh, for the first three feasts during the first century, um, we still consider it as fulfilled. You know, we still consider Pentecost as fulfilled, and the next one is trumpets. Now we're we're missing some um, we're missing some festivals in there. Uh, but that aside, we talked about that in the first uh, episode. There's actually more than seven festivals. There's 12. Um, but uh, we get that from the Dead Sea Scrolls. But what 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 if we're looking at, what, what if we've been looking at this all wrong? If we focus in on the end of the age of Torah through the age of grace until the beginning of the kingdom age, what if there's actually meant to be multiple fulfillments of all these feasts, not just Pentecost? Pentecost was fulfilled by God from heaven, by sending the Holy Spirit down to us, not by Jesus in bodily form from on earth, but he will fulfill Pentecost that way. Yet we still consider Pentecost fulfilled. So Pentecost gets two fulfillments in that way, just from the end of the last age, just from uh, Jesus, the time of Jesus to his return. What if all of them are like that? Now, if there are multiple fulfillments, and if Jesus is going to fulfill the spring feast again in his second coming, followed by the fall feast in the beginning of the kingdom age, then we should expect to find a fulfillment of the fall feasts sometime after Pentecost of 32 AD and before Christ's return. Now, given that it seems the Day of Atonement is fulfilled by the abomination of desolation being set up in the temple, it stands to reason that we might find the fulfillment of the rest of the fall feasts uh, during the tribulation period. Remember, Pentecost was fulfilled by God from heaven to earth. There's a lot of stuff that happens in the tribulation that's from heaven to earth. That's basically all of Revelation, right? So maybe the fall feasts are going to be fulfilled that way. We know at least the Day of Atonement is um, when the, the abomination of desolation is set up. So before that, we have trumpets. After that, we have, um, and we have some other feasts before that too, but after that, we have uh, tabernacles. So we might be inclined to think, since spring feasts were fulfilled near the end of the age of Torah, we should expect the following fall feasts to be, to be fulfilled sometime before 70 AD. But at Pentecost in 32 AD, this is what we have to remember, Um, At that moment, the focus is no longer on Israel, but now is on the church. That's a traditional dispensationalist view. That's a view I hold, um, and uh, a good example of why I'm really open about my and biases and things like that. But um, but I do I do see that in Scripture. So. the focus isn't on Israel, 
It's on the church. Now, that does not mean that God is done with Israel. That does not mean that the church replaces Israel or anything silly like that. I do not advocate replacement theology. But what it means is the plans for Israel are on hold, they're on pause, while God accomplishes his goals through the church. So that means the entire church age age falls between the fulfillment of the spring feasts and the fulfillment of the fall feasts, which isn't exactly the most accurate way to describe the feasts, uh, but we'll get into that in a minute, a little later. The spring feasts um, are fulfilled by Christ until Pentecost. Then there's the church age until the rapture occurs, which is, in my opinion, prior to the seven-year tribulation. And then God's focus is back on Israel as uh, the 70th week of Daniel occurs. Now, I believe that it's going to be during that time that the fall feasts are going to be fulfilled. They're going to be fulfilled during the tribulation. Uh, because some some might say, well, the, the rapture is trumpets. That's got to be trumpets. I would say the church doesn't have festival days. The church doesn't have a calendar. Israel does. But uh, the rapture isn't for Israel as a nation. The, the, the rapture is for Christians. Um, and that could be, you know, Jews, Gentiles, you know, it could be any any number of each, but it's not for a national Israel type of thing. So I would not put the rapture on trumpets. I would put something with Israel on trumpets. Um, so, I, and, and like I said, I, I believe that the, the, the rapture comes before the seven-year tribulation. Then God's focus is back on Israel. Uh, Israel, as the 70th week of Daniel occurs, I believe it will be during that time that the fall feasts will be fulfilled. And then after that, Jesus comes to fulfill the feasts again, but this time to initiate the kingdom age. And there will be another fulfillment of the fall feast sometime after that. So these feasts, uh, you can look at this throughout scripture. They get fulfilled over and over again. And if the multiple fulfillments view seems odd, um, and I'm just going to call it that, doesn't have an official name that I know of, but we'll just call it that, the multiple fulfillments view of festivals. If that seems odd, remember, again, all of these feasts were already fulfilled once at their initiation. Every single one of them, when they first started, they were fulfilled. As we've seen, Pentecost has been fulfilled at least twice already, according to the Bible. Once at Mount Sinai with the children of Israel, and another one at the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in 32 AD. So there's nothing to say that these feasts are only going to be fulfilled one more time. There's nothing to say that. Now, according to the book of Jubilees, if we take that into consideration, Pentecost has been, been fulfilled like a dozen times or something, many, many more times uh, than just those two. So e each of those other feasts were fulfilled when they were first initiated as well. So there, and you can you can read the meanings of all of them in the Old Testament. They all mean something, and it, you know it harkens back to Egypt and slavery, and they're they're being rescued out of that situation. Um, so the idea of multiple fulfillments of festivals through different ages and covenants that shouldn't bother us at all. That's actually the norm. We should we should actually expect that. Um, so that leads us to the fall feast of, of the tribulation. What are these going to be? Uh, we're going to do that in members only. So if you're not a member, please head on over to dailyrenegade.com and get a membership. It really helps us out. Uh, and if you if you like this ministry, if you if you love us and want to support us, that's that's how to do it. If you're not exactly sure and you want to try it out first, then go ahead and get a free trial. You get seven days to try us out and see see what you think. See if it's the a ministry that you would care to support. Uh, and if not, that's fine. If so, we'd love to have you. DailyRenegade.com. Also, because people have asked if you are interested in helping my son Nathan, who um, has leukemia. He's in remission now, thank God, but he is also dealing with a, a litany of mental health issues that is just it, it's 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 a nightmare. Whenever um, we're we're still in the process of learning about some of these things ourselves, but when uh, when we have more information, we'll 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 do more of an update on that. But if 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 you want to help. There's a link in the description below where you can donate to Nathan. It's just paypal.me slash Josh Peck Disclosure. Uh, so you can uh, you can donate there and that would help out a lot. So if you want to get the rest of this video and so much more, head on over to dailyrenegade.com and get a membership. So if you are a member, hang on the line. Everybody else, love you all. We got a lot more to talk about. Take care. God bless.